This video is going to show you Solar Grandmaster Nightfall getting Platinum Rank on the Exus Crash on a Void Walker Warlock. We've already done the Exus Crash Solar GMs more than once and we've covered it in depth. But I wanted to do one sort of last one this season just to do a final run on it if you like for the Exus Crash just because there's been more major changes since I last run this. Two major changes that I want to showcase is that Axion Ball Grenades got buffed. Uh, their damage got buffed and their radius and their tracking got buffed uh, so they're now usable never used to be really usable now they are usable more than that I would say I'll talk more about that throughout the run and also Arbalist once you get the catalyst and fully master work it you get Genesis on Arbalist and you also get anti barrier well you it has anti barrier intrinsic into the weapon you don't need the catalyst for that though but <clears throat> it's well worth getting the catalyst because when you do it gets Genesis so when you break a barrier shield a champion that is it refills the magazine so, you know, it's exceptional for that. So for this starting section, I would recommend you taking out the snipers and the sparrows because they wreck you. Incoming arc is on, so you want to be running double arc damage resistance. They do stack, so you should run them both. My armor mods, I showed them at the start of the video, but let's go over it quickly. It's a protective light build with fire and ice. When you defeat a champion, you, you spawn a well. Combine that with elemental charge, which gives you charge of light when you pick up an elemental well. It doesn't need to be matching well. So I'm on a void class fire and ice spawns stasis and fire, uh, solar, um, and I'm not on the either of them classes. <coughs> it doesn't have to match for this. And then you get your charge of light, thus giving you protect flight. And we've also got to take a taken charge on 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 there to back that up. That's the basics of the build. And then obviously ammo finders. On the helmet, scavengers on the boots, and then that stacks for both weapons. Because we're going to use double linear, so that's Arbalist, with threading needle, and then a arc bow. But you can use any bow that you want. You can use a shoot to loot, um, wolf tone draw if you wanted. Because it'll work out really good at the boss if you wanted, wanted to. I just like using uh, this bow. I was happy using this because it's got explosive thread in it. Um, but this loadout overall is going to be the easiest for most people to do. Lemon arcs very good as well but I think for somebody who's new to it doing the solo GMs or what have you or practicing Arbalus is, is just the best choice you know just because there's, there's a times when you're fighting from range so Arbalus covers that it's got it's good on champion damage it's good for barriers it's good for boss damage it's good for the tank it's pretty much good for everywhere in this that's why I'm saying I would say this is definitely the best loadout for most folks. And then to top that off with Void Walker Axion Ball Grenades. Because they're very good for Ag Clear, which you need a bit of that. Um, in terms of how much grenade energy you get as opposed to Vortex Grenade, because the classic build for this is Vortex Grenade, right? And you still do get your grenade back. A well hit grenade on a champ with a Vortex one will give you your grenade fully back with 100% discipline. With Axion Bolt Grenades, it doesn't work as much, right? A well-placed Axion will give you half of your grenade back. That's with max discipline. Now, I know someone's going to say, well, why aren't you using um, Grenade Kickstart? Grenade Kickstart is a stasis mod on Gauntlet. The thing is, yeah, you can do that, but we're in a GM, and I want to I wanna be running some mods. If I wasn't in a GM and I'm not dealing with champions, I would run a stasis uh, Grenade Kickstart and go like that. But I feel as though, without that, I'm getting more than enough grenades, and I'm using Bomber. So every time I pop a healing rift, I get grenade energy, so that um, takes down the cooldown of my grenade. What I'm doing here is killing all the Marudas first. If you didn't know, Marudas spawn in immediately, but once you um, capture all the pulse waves, you get an extra spawn of adds. The goal is not to do that until you're ready. Kill all the Marauders first, then come for, come for the last pulse wave. That will then uh, enable you to spawn kill all the adds. I've got a Nova Bomb, I can use that. So I've got a Nova Bomb, a Nova Bomb Grenade. And that should clear out, clear out a lot of adds. Then we'll come back to this rock, do a healing, and then we can finish off the rest. My Nova didn't do as much Add clear as I wanted it to, so there's still some adds left, but that's fine. And as, as I said, the, the whole idea of that is just to make that little bit easier, because 
if you don't do it like that all the ads will separate out and you'll have to bow each one down and play a bit more passively than what i did and all the ads will be separated meaning you can't spawn kill them as easy so doing that little tip there even though it might not be a big deal it makes it a little easier now with the champion so we'll just pick a bit of cover and just strafe it you don't need to fight too far away i've seen a couple of people um fighting this overload from like miles away you don't need to do that man just pick a bit of cover that's close to the champ and just strafe the champ learn the strafe uh, it's not difficult you know um you're just strafing in out of cover while hitting the champ and doing it close like that just makes it easy to hit your shots and you can combine that with a bit of linear damage spam your li spam your ammo like you'll see in this run i get loads of ammo plenty just because of how good it is the fact that double linear works for all my scavenger mods right because it's working for both heavy and um the kinetic Keeps doing this champion overall axion bolts i'm impressed with them they're really good on master level so if you're at power right so if you you know if you if you load into a 13 30 activity in your 13 30 right say you do a master pressage axion bolts m will melt in there they will literally melt in gms they don't melt but they certainly do put out a good bit of damage the fact that you you know you're 25 power level under you can almost one shot an orange bar if there's enough explosions around the orange bar you'll actually one shot an orange bar um so you know they're not doing as much damage as what maybe one single vortex would but the advantage is that it tracks all ads in that surrounding area and any ads that you can't see it will track for you the vortex one it won't do that so there's pros and cons to the both of them but for general champion takedown damage vortex is better just in general but for times when you, you need to hide a bit the axion bolt works out decent so you're not handicapping yourself in other words by using it it's definitely you know save virus grenade is like a 10 out of 10 grenade well this is a good 8 or 9 out of 10 grenade it, it, it's very good i'm not just using it because i'm using it i'm using it because it has got buffed and it is really good so i use the super there just to try and clear out any dregs that i could um as your goal is to clear out all the dregs first because what happens here with this initial player encounter is there's two overloads already here there's a couple of invis marauders that don't push you they won't only some of them will but not all of them will so don't count on that but your goal is to take out all dregs so you don't get naded because they'll just constantly nade you right um so ideally you want to take out one of the overloads safely now you can't really go out there you're going to struggle because then there's marauders push so your best option safely to do this is just to take out one of the overloads from back here from these stairs the only problem that sometimes it presents just depends on where the overloads positioned is when you stun the overload his crit spot his head goes lower than uh, the platform so i can't hit him i can't do damage so it is a little bit annoying that. So I just have to do damage when I can. Do healing rifts when you can as well. And just make sure that both champions aren't hit you. Because these there's two different types of overload champions. There's the, there's the ones that fight from range with the arc seekers. They're the worst ones in my eyes. There's those and then there's the solar ones. The solar ones are deadly up close. I'm not going to lie. They can melt you so quick. But if you know how to dodge that, that's fine. If you've got a bit of cover and you know how to straight out strafe that, you're safe for that. With the arc attack, you're not so much safe. There's times that the arc seekers can come around a corner and kill you. You know, so you've got to be aware of that. We killed the first overload anyways. Um, I couldn't really do much linear damage, so I just took him out with the bow. And then you come to this location. Once it's just you and one of the champions isolated, you can take the champ wherever you want. So take the champ somewhere good, somewhere where you can do a bit of damage. We get back our super as well, just as we finish the champ. It's good. 
we lost protective light so we'll re-up on protective light by getting the wells I didn't pick up all the wells there make sure you pick up all the wells and then you'll get charged times two rather than times one it just means when protective light kicks in it won't last as long the higher you charge your light the better it is like if you run a times five build with protective light it lasts longer than what it does at a base so the idea with the plate mechanic is to step on and off when you get an odd wave step off if you're not confident step off right away now i spawn in two overloads because each overload's linked to each wave of ads so um i've spawned in two waves there which you don't need to do that i'm just trying to speed it up a little bit but ideally you just step off each time that way you, you're only fighting one overload at a time rather than two uh the thing about these overloads their ai is different notice they're both solar what are they doing they're pushing up so it's interesting so each different type of overload has a different pattern a different pattern these will push up to the stairs because they're solar right the arc ones won't so you, if you know when there's solar captains and when there's arc captains then your job's easier you know what to do what to expect the worst thing i'm just glad that the, the, they haven't got double arc overload captains all the time because that's the worst these solar ones you can control not too bad we use the Axion Ball Grenade to our right because I know the dregs, they hang out round to that right hand side. So we can take those out. And we can just clear off this champ. I'll do a bit of linear damage. I just do two or three shots per stun. I don't do any more than that because you run the risk of not getting your bow stun shot in time. Unless you're committing to the kill, don't do more than three shots. It is the golden rule for it. For this, for this season anyways with your linears. Now we'll capture some more progress. We're going to charge up a nade to sort of do some initial damage to the adds, and then we retreat. I believe you get a wave at yeah, just now, and then we'll get a two barriers at 50%. So ideally, you would, you would just step off here, but I'm not. I'm staying on. It's not much of a big deal. That's only like a mini wave. You don't get champions there anyways until the 50% mark. Now you get the um, the two servers or the barriers. There's some wretches. They wretches do push, so that's ideally. You can get those safely from the stairs. These barriers aren't threatening. They do void. Void is not buffed in this nightfall, so you're not. it's going to take a few hits for them to kill you. So, But here's the beauty. Arbalist can just take the uh, champs from here. Obviously, when um, Disruption Break kicks in, you can um, take advantage of that. And Genesis. Another thing I didn't mention in this run, you'll see my aim widely go to the left or right or upwards because I've got a bit of stick drift, control, uh, stick drift issues with my controller. They just start to break after a couple of months. PS5 controllers, they're terrible. But that's why that's happening, just if you know. I mean, my aim's not the best as it is anyways, but... Sometimes my shots are just way off. It's just because of, as I say, I've got a bit of stick drift. Once you kill the first barrier champion, you then spawn in three overloads. This is where people are going to probably have problems. But if you stand right back where I am, exactly here, and then just stun champions, just keep stunning. There's a bit of RNG to this because they'll, because there's three of them, one might teleport in front of the other, and then the other, and you might find it annoying. Because you might maybe know over one of the champs, and the, the champ that you know over that you didn't kill teleported behind the other champ. Thus, you lost all your damage and you'll regen. So I wouldn't commit to a kill. When you, at the very start, when there's three overloads, just keep stunning the champ and you can see to the fo to probably the most left side of the screen. It's important. Because if you stun a champ into your right, the, the champ into your left will melt you. Because obviously the champion to your right can't see you as much as the left one. So you need to be doing this strafe that I'm doing. Even if they're not shooting you because it confuses them. Right? So shoot, bow, strafe. Shoot, bow, strafe. And then I would Nova probably, as I said, the Nova bombs do about half HP to a champ. So I definitely would use a Nova here. It's a good time to do so. Um, but only when a champion gets around about half HP, then commit to that kill. 
don't do it at full HP because you'll just you, you, chances are you're gonna lose damage when it gets to two or two or one champion it's not as it's not as bad there's a champion behind him that keeps teleporting to the left though so I was keeping an eye on that but then we um, melted down that second but overload when it's down to one champion you can do what you want it really doesn't matter I would advise though using your ammo because you can see how much ammo I'm getting on the floor because of, it's just consistent so definitely be using you don't just bow champs you know be using your ammo definitely because there's plenty of opportunities to get more ammo as, as this goes on I wouldn't recommend finishing, uh, I don't know if I mentioned or not, but there's a bug going around with overloads, so if you stun, or well any champ, if you stun a champ, sometimes they disappear and then respawn. So if you if you do <coughs> finish a champ, and say you're using the build Fire and Ice, if you don't get elemental mods, uh, wells, <coughs> then that means the, the champ isn't killed. Also, you haven't got kill credit, so you're going to have to back up and wait. So I would recommend just killing a champ. I wouldn't recommend special finisher builds at the minute because of that bug. It bugs, it's a little silly. Um, but we can take out the final barrier with Arbalest easily. <coughs> and then we resume the plate. So on the second half of the plate you'll get overloads, but you'll only ever get one overload, overload per phase. My Nova Bomb was late here. If I'd done my Nova Bomb a little bit sooner, I would have got more adds. My my um my idea was to try and kill as much as the fallen coming out as possible, but my nova was too late. So just nova as soon as. But my intention is to not nova the champ, but to nova all the ads. Because <coughs> the ads can be dangerous when when you try and fight the overload. So if you you know you need to take out the the ads first before. This overload's in a bad position, I can tell you that right away. His critical hit spot is... See, I don't like that. When, when the overload stuns, they, they slightly move and move and move behind cover slowly each phase. And it just annoys me, so I'm going to have to resituate for that champ. <clears throat> if all the adds are killed, you can just, again, come out here. So I'm going to do such... I'm going to do that. There's no falling left, so I'll just add a quick glance. That's good. After this, there'll be one more, one, well, two more major phases, I guess. That's the stick drift happening. It is annoying. It's okay, though. Finish the overload off. That's good. We've lost protective light, so I'll pick up my times two. I only got pierce. And then we'll get the next phase. The next phase has solar shields, but because of Arbalest and it being able to penetrate match game shields, it makes it a cinch. You don't need to worry about the solar shields. Just hit them with Arbalest. That will then immediately break the shield and then you can just melt them with your heavy, special. Just manage your ammo. I mean, but as I said, you should be getting plenty anyways, as long as you've got your ammo finders on and your scavengers. There's no champion on this phase. Um, on the next phase, when you get, you'll get two solar shields. So there's two solar shield solar shanks, and the overload champion, and a couple of uh, vandals and things, and obviously exploders. They're not a problem, the exploders, because even if you don't clear out all the exploders, once you retreat, they will just go to the plate and you can just do a nade or bore them or whatever and, you know, they're easily taken out. Now we can do with the solar shank, missing some crits. It's one shot. We'll use a bit of heavy here instead, why not? Doesn't really matter at this point. 
We'll throw a nade just to see if there's any... Um, that's the thing about this grenade as well. It'll track all the adds near, so you, you, you have an idea <coughs> of what adds are still left up. So I knew there was two vandals up, and then there's no more adds, so that's ideal. Now I can come over to my good place, over to here, and then just take out this final uh, champ. I have an overbomb to burn, so I'll just use it. Why not? Just keep stunning him. And that's the last champion killed. Get our charge of light. And then we're good. Fill up on your ammo, of course. You can see there's so much ammo on the floor for me. So, I, you know, I could have spammed my ammo literally more than, than what I did. But I'm max on my heavy and my special, that's the main thing. And then we come to the patrol section. So I've talked about this multiple times, but I'll just tell you the caveats, because you need to know. There can be, there could be a public event going on, because this is now a public zone on Nessus. I'm sure you know this area. Um, if there's a public event, it's sometimes in your best favour, because the ads can be distracted if that happens. Because these ads are GM ads in terms of they can melt you down. Even though they're patrol ads, they can melt you. But they don't have the health pool that a GM ad would have. So you can see that I just literally one shot that um, drag on the sparrow. So do it. Because the, the, they, they literally will melt you. And if you're on your sparrow, they could just melt you on your sparrow and you die. And the rules apply for GM here. So if you die, you're back to orbit. So, just sort of look at Yeri. Now, I saw there was a level 5 here. I shouldn't be able to call this solo, but it is still a solo. He got the last waves from me, so that was handy to me. And I also saw that the dregs were chasing him, so I was okay to sort of sparrow over there, and I was obviously going to collect the last two, but he got them. And then we're on to the tank section. This is still a public zone. It shouldn't be, really. There should be no ads here. I don't know why they develop strikes like this. There's so many strikes like this where you do a bit of strike and then you go through the map of a planet. Then you go to the final boss room. A lot of them are de designed that way, but it's bad design because um, it interferes with scoring and all sorts. Like if you were to do competitive scoring on this strike, you can't because someone could go just come here and farm up points. You know, they used to do stuff like that where you used to... Um, See who get the highest points and stuff. Scored nightfalls. That used to be a thing. Right? We don't do all that anymore now because it's just all everyone's obsessed with GMs, you know, and not so much the score. It's 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 more about the platinum, you know. Uh, in in my eyes, I think they should do platinum and score. So you should have to meet a threshold, and you need to get platinum. I don't think platinum's enough right now because you've seen a lot of people speed run these strikes and things, and they're just using. Let's see, two Izanagi Burdens, Divinity, they're just killing champs. Or they're using Kaitison with Sleeper or whatever they're using. They're just killing champs and moving on. Get going in Vs, moving on. You're skipping half the strike. Now, are you telling me that's good design? It's not. It should be, as I said, points. So you literally have to do everything, kill everything in there. You should be able, you should, you should have to do that. And then also get Platinum. So say it's a platinum and then a score of 300,000 or 250, whatever it might be per nightfall. That's what I think it should be, but it's not. With this tank section, you literally just melt them down. That's all you do. And I've come back to here because this entrance section, because I couldn't get the uh, critical hit on the tank. And that's a higher multiplier. If you get the tank in the middle like that, it's a higher multiplier for damage. So I'm losing damage there by not doing it. That's why I come to the entrance. Also, the tank will be not centered on you. He's centered on the void boss, on the um, Minotaur, which is ideal. That never used to happen. They, they sort of changed that at some point where the void boss would always spawn. So it actually works out in our best interest. So what I was trying to do is shoot this mine, but I shot too soon. And it sort of hit the wall. It hit the blue wall, but it was despawned anyways. So, that didn't plan out. Because if you shoot that mine in time, it basically does a lot of damage to all the ads because they're grouped up. Now we'll start working on the overload. This is what I was on about before. 
When you keep stunning an overlord, they slowly move over. Right, so he, you can see every time he's slowly taking a step to the uh, right, which is closer to cover. So everything's fine, the overlord's not doing anything, and he just keeps stunning to the right. So my angle's lo I'm losing the angle. And um, because of how aim assist works on console as well, which it's not always to our advantage. People think it's always to our advantage. It's not. Because that bow's going to try and seek to its head rather than the body. I was wanting to body him. I can't. Because the bow is seeking to his head and his head's around the corner. So it's hitting the cover rather than the champ. Aim assist is so, so much of a problem at times. Especially when you're trying to go fast. When there's ads coming in the way and you're trying to aim at a boss and there's frawl. You, your reticle is just going to stick to the frog and not the boss. So there's so many issues at times. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is good at, at times as well, obviously. But at times it just gets in the way. And I wish you could just switch it off. But you can't. Not that I believe. So I'll take out the rest of the wretches. Generally I would have uh, more of them killed. A bomb exploded, which got to be careful with that. So what I decided to do, because this run was a little scuffed, you know, my aim was pretty bad and stuff like that. I just wanted to experiment, seeing if I could skip. Um, which I wouldn't recommend doing if you're not confident. Just take out the ads and then you can go to the um, exit. But it, it, it worked out, it was okay. You can pr skip it pretty comfortably, but if the sniper does hit you, you are sort of screwed. So bear that in mind it's the risk to reward do you really want to save two minutes just to die probably not so you're best off just skip uh just killing the ads if you're on a hunter you can just invis past for sure so what you want to do is come to the boss arena have your feet on the floor kill some of the shanks not all of them i recommend leaving one or two up doesn't matter then to do the exploit i'm sure you know if you're watching it but if you don't then you jump up to this blue pillar and then up to the entrance of the boss room. Then you go up this ring a little bit like the entrance. You, you sort of go up the wall a little bit like two or three steps. It helps you to make the jumps. A hunter will struggle getting up here. I have got up on a hunter before. Um, but the Titan and the Warlock are, are certainly easier than that. And then you fight from this box area. You kill the last shank, the boss will then spawn in. So, when you're up here, this is where the Axion Bolt build will come in. Right, because Axion Bolt's track. Now, we know that there's a problem, not a problem, but this exploit's good and bad because ads hide, right? The, the Diag Road, what does that ad do when they can't fight you? They hide, and there's a lot of places to hide. <coughs> so, what I tend to do is use a Nova right here as ads spawning, you know. Try and get as many ads killed as possible. Using a grenade as well as they're spawning in. Because you get two waves per, per phase. When I say per phase, I mean per third of the uh, boss's HP. For every third, you get two waves of ads. You'll see them drop down. <clears throat> like this is the second wave of the first phase. So try and get as much damage in as you can. My nade wasn't quite up, which wasn't ideal. I could have done with doing a nade just as they go into cover but it doesn't matter so much because when they do go into cover just do a grenade below you the grenade tracks all those ads and takes them out for you then do a bit of boss damage you're waiting on your grenade cooldown if you get a healing rift pop it because then we get our grenade back from bomber easy peasy another grenade down and now we're multitasking we're doing a little bit of boss damage and we're doing some ad clear at the same time that's what's so good about it better than vortex this particular grenade is better than Vortex for this particular strategy that we're doing. You know? Um, but Vortex works well, because I've done it with the Vortex as well in the past. But this is even better, because it does track. You know? And, and this bit is annoying, because you can't, you can't get to the next phase until all the ads are killed. That's the, that's the um, requirement, that all ads are killed. The shanks aren't a requirement, but I recommend killing one or two. Because they drop you ammo. If they explode, they don't drop ammo, I don't believe. You've got to tag them. You've got to tag them to make to help you to get ammo. Now, you could use Wolf Tundra, like I said, with the shooter loot. So, you OP, you can just... If you run out of Arbalest, just shoot a brick. 
with your wolf tundra. But as I said, I'm not too bothered about doing that because I was going to save pretty much all my ammo anyways. For DBS on the last phase and for the champs. You know, and let my nade do the work. I wanted to showcase the nade more than Arbalest for the ads. You know. So the next phase hasn't initiated. Right, so this is where we've got the problem. So we need to find out where the last ad is. Now, memory serves me right, it's the orange bar. Because I, I realised I didn't kill an orange bar dreg. And that's part of the spawn for the first wave. So I know that it's the dreg. Now the dreg can hide behind the pillars. The two pillars are shot behind. Explosive head will do damage, but there's no damage there. So I know he's somewhere else. So I've slowly crept down this box. Don't go too far because you will fall off. You've got to be quite slow about it. And I found that the drag was below me, so that's good. I I was sort of confused because the grenade wasn't tracking him. And I don't know why, but we ended up finding out where he was in the end. <clears throat> so something I found out and didn't know about, or probably forgot about, there's, there's things that over time I forget about, but if you kill the barrier, so on this first wave, on the second wave, on the second phase, you'll get a barrier spawn, but only one. Now, if you kill that champ, on the next wave you get two, uh, two barriers, whereas if you don't kill the champion, you only get one spawn out. So in other words, don't kill the barrier, because <coughs> you're going to have another two to kill. So I've had to kill an extra champion because of this, and I didn't know that, because I was sort of thinking, right, I've got Arbalest on, let's just melt this champion, I'll get one more, and then I'm done. But it, no, it wasn't like that. Uh, my Nova Bomb hit the um, that environment, that black cord or whatever it is, which was annoying. I didn't know that was actual thing, so I lost damage because of that. So we're going to do a bit of damage to the, ch uh, to the boss to spawn in the next wave of barriers, which as I said, it's going to be two. So don't take out the first one. The best thing to do is just do damage to the boss until you get the next barrier. And then you only have to take two rather than three. Do an aid when possible, but don't do it on the boss. Do your nade below you, because that's where you're getting the, your uh, utility out of it on the ads, because the ads are the problem, not the boss. The boss will always aggro on you, which is good. It's a great thing. Apart from phase three, he doesn't. But the boss does have two different modes. He has his solar mode, where he's aggroed on you the whole time. <coughs> and then on the final phase, he has the uh, invisible, where it's a little bit harder to track him and things. So this is where the barriers come in. So my ammo is pretty low, <coughs> but I made best of it. I've got four arbalist shots and four linear heavy. Um, I'll, I'll lead with a grenade. I'm forgetting about the boss at this point. We'll get us done with arbalist, and then we'll do three shots with the frayed needle. We're waiting on the last shield break, and then we just get him with one arbalist left. So as I said. A less common to play might be better with the wolf tone draw because there is some special bricks down there which I could have shot and got, what have you. But overall, you know, I, but in my defense, I had to kill another barrier, so I wasn't expecting that. So I've had to use more ammo than what I was expecting. So now we're just bowing him to death until the final wave. So here's the th advantage to not using shoot a loop because when we do go down there we're going to finish the boff, boss off down there we have all that ammo to pick up and do damage with so even though i'm not getting advantage of the ammo now i will later on so it still works out the next phase hasn't initiated the next phase will initiate when the shanks explode like that so there was just one ad left which was really good so uh, my ad clear was pretty good. Your ad clear needs to be done while you're fighting the boss. Because once the boss retreats, the ads are even more likely to hide. They will sort of fight you a bit more when the boss is alive. So try and do your nades while you're doing damage. But for the most part, you should be fine, as I said. Because of, of the nade tracking, etc. So on this final phase, this is the last final phase. There's no champions, of course. There's just explorer shanks. And a lot of invisible marauders. I would say there's around 10 or 8. So I would just 
Do a nade below you, because that's where the marauders hide. They won't go anywhere else but underneath. So that's good to know. So every time you get a grenade, throw it beneath you, and your grenade will do the work. You'll need at least two or three grenades to clear them all, by the looks of it. But make sure you clear out all the exploded shanks, because you're going to go down there and fight the boss. The last thing you want is these exploded shanks being left alive while you're trying to fight. You know, you don't want that. Because the boss is now in visible mode, so he won't, he, he has no range attacks, he's just merely focused. So you can use that to your advantage, do damage, jump over his head, use your Nova Bomb, stuff like that. If you're not confident that all Marauders are killed, just do a test grenade. That's fine, you'll get your grenade back. Just do a test grenade below you. If the grenade does not track, that means you're safe. That means there's no more Marauders. I'm just doing a little look down below. I can't see anything. I'm also wanting to see where the boss is before I jump down. Because I don't want to jump on top of the boss's head. I can see he was just there. Try not to try just to drop off the box. Don't jump off it because you've got a turn back message. And if you do get that turn back, you will die. Like if, if you were to hover on a warlock like on that jump, you could die. So don't have that happen. Just drop off the box. But obviously don't let the fall damage, because um, you could die from fall damage, which I've seen footage of people dying from fall damage in this, like from 100% HP to nothing. We use an overbomb as well. Try and jump over his head, then sort of 360, then Nova. That's the best way of doing it. That way your Nova doesn't miss. And then we're just going to do linear shots. We're just going to jump over his head, do grenades. He went invisible. And then we're just um we're just sort of going back and forth. That's the, the whole strap behind this. Don't let the boss melee you twice. Uh, notice I haven't got protective light because there hasn't been any champions. So I could have used charge harvester, but I wanted the 100% recovery. You lose recovery when you when you use that. Going to keep doing damage. We've got plenty of ammo. Max on Arbalest. So we've got all the all the DPS in the world to just finish this off. But that was the solo GM on Exus Crash. That pretty much anyone to easily do. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.